Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to paint both a stone and brick wall. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to today's painting video. And we are going to kick this off by looking at a really, really quick and easy way of painting a stone wall. And we're going to be using this building here from Joan of Arc to do this. But first of all, let's have a look at what stone walls actually look like, because I think we typically imagine that stone walls are just predominantly grey, but as we can see from these pictures, that is not the case. We have lots of natural variation across the entire wall, as well as individual stones being different colours. There are lots of browns, greens, maybe yellows in there as well. And so that look is what we're going to try and recreate today. So we're going to start by base coating with aged bone, which as the name suggests is a bone colour, but it's just a colour that's not quite grey, not quite tan, it's just sort of somewhere in between, but still very natural looking. And so this is going to be our base colour, the main colour that the wall will be, but we'll also be picking out individual stones with some other colours to try and get some good natural variation. And so bone white and leather brown are the two colours that I chose for this. So I'm starting by picking out individual stones with the bone white, which is an off-white colour. It's on the way to being white, but it's not quite there. It's just essentially a lighter version of the aged bone, so that when some washes go over the top later on, we start to get some really good variation in there, and to, for that variation to be seen, we need to get a bit of contrast, and so that's why I've gone with a lighter colour. Now there's no real rhyme or reason as to why I'm picking out certain stones with the bone white. It's more about just getting a bit of an even distribution across the entire wall, just so that by the end it looks as though they didn't just have access to one type of stone, there were different types that were needed. And so now we're moving on to the leather brown, which is the other colour that I'll be using to pick out individual stones with. And the reason why I chose leather brown is because it's not a brown brown it's not a real solid deep color it's got i guess a little bit of orange mixed into it and so that just gives it a little bit of a sandy look so it'll give that further variation like what the bone white is going to be doing but it's also going to stand out nicely against the aged bone and the bone white because it is quite a different color and so just like with the bone white, I'm just going around and picking out individual stones. There is no mapped out plan or anything like that as to which stones get painted which colour. It's just as you can see here from our little view around the whole building, it's just a bit of a random distribution so that we can see all of these colours mixed between the entire stone wall. But now for the final step, we're going to apply our washes. And so separately, we're going to be putting down Null Oil, the black wash, which is what is going down first, and then Agrax Earthshade, which is the brown wash, which will go over the top of that. Now, the reason why I'm putting these down separately is because I want to get some tonal variation, not just within individual stones, but across the whole surface of the wall as well. And if I just mixed the black and brown together, then it's only going to be the same color. So I put the Nuln Oil wash down first, the black wash, so that it can flow into all of the recesses, bring out all of the texture and the individual joins between each of the stones. And then I'm just picking out different spots to apply the brown wash, the Agrax Earthshade. And this really is just in different spots to bring out that natural tonal variation. And there we go, that's all there is to it, and we have ourselves a pretty effective looking, but with not too much time or effort, stone wall. But the main thing here though is that we do use a couple of different natural looking tones just so that we can get that variation. And so now we're going to get straight into having a go at painting a brick wall. And we are going to pretty much take the exact same steps that we did for the stone wall, but just this time we're going to use colours that are more suited to painting bricks. Because all of the same theories and reasons behind the way that we painted the stone wall is going to apply here. Because as we look at these pictures here of some different brick walls, we notice the same sorts of things. We don't just have one flat colour, we have lots of different colours going on in there. We have browns and reds and oranges, we even have some creamy sorts of colours in there, depending on how much weathering has occurred. And so that's what we're going to try and recreate with our brick wall. And so we're going to be using earth brown to base coat with. This is just a mid-tone brown. 
And the reason why I'm going with a mid-tone brown is because, again, the final step for the brick wall will be to put some washes over the top. And so we want those washes to bring out the texture and the joins in those bricks, but we don't want it to turn it too dark. And if we start with a dark brown to base coat with, those washes aren't going to have too much of an effect. So we start with a mid-tone brown so that those washes can do their job. And so here you can see that we're going to start to bring some reds and oranges in as well. I'm just going to start by getting some natural variation across the entire wall before picking out individual stones. So after that base coat dried, I've just reapplied that same brown so that I'm then able to wet blend in the reds and the oranges. So I just dotted in the red first, blended that together, and then now you can see I've dotted in some orange as well to blend that in too. But I haven't tried to cover the whole surface with the red or the orange because I want there to be natural variation. So you can see here I've just sort of blobbed it in kind of randomly and as I'm blending it you can still see that that brown is showing through. The same thing is going to happen when I mix in the orange. I'll just sort of blob that in kind of randomly as you can see here so that hopefully there'll be some brown, some orange, and some red showing, but then also all of those in-between colours that we naturally get by blending these together. But really just the main purpose of this is so that we just get some nice natural variation across the entire wall before we start picking out individual bricks. Okay, so now that that blend of colours has mixed and is going to act as a nice base coat for us to work over, we're now going to start to pick out individual bricks. And we're just going to use that same orange and red for this that we used to blend into the brown. So I'm just starting with the orange and I'm just going around just like I did with the stones earlier on and I'm picking out individual bricks. Again, no rhyme or reason as to why certain bricks are being painted. I'm just trying to get an even distribution of these throughout the entire wall just to get that natural variation of colours that we saw in all of those different pictures. And so with enough bricks picked out with the orange, we're now going to do the exact same thing with the red. Nothing different here, just picking out random bricks here and there across the full surface of the wall, just to get further variation. And now that we've finished picking out enough individual bricks, we're going to finish it off by just applying a dark brown wash over the top. For this, I'll be using my Agrax Earthshade. So this will flow into all of the recesses to bring out all of the texture and those joins between the individual bricks. But it's also going to just bring that orange and red down a little bit to tie into those base coat colours that we originally used, just so that they aren't too bright. And that's it, that's our brick wall painted, just like the stonework, very, very quick and easy. But I think the effect that you get is really, really cool. And certainly when these buildings or whatever it is that your painting goes into the middle of the table, the effect is more than convincing. So that's going to do us for today. So if you found this video useful and you're going to be able to use this in your own painting, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please hit that as well to stay up to date with future videos as they keep coming out. But that's going to do us for today. So until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.